welcome to Ones to Watch, powered by Football Index, where you bet on the football stock market by buying shares in the world's top players. We're joined, as always, by our very own Sir Alan McAnally. How are we, Al? Uh, yeah, hi, I'm great. Yeah, looking forward to this today. There's a couple of players I think we should be thinking about on Football Index. Well, let's crack on. Who's your first one to watch? Uh, gets four goals. Impossible for him not to be on everybody's tongue at the moment. Hong Min Song. And for Spurs, he's been absolutely fantastic, considering... <clears throat> excuse me, Emma, it, it probably cost, what, the, the guts of 20 million a few years ago. And I think the only time he hasn't really been available is when he had to go back to South Korea for his, um, his national service. So he's been that important. And probably, uh, as his time's gone on at Spurs, I think people are realising what a good football player he is. He certainly is. 89 caps and 26 goals for South Korea. And under oh. Jose Mourinho, he's played 29 games, uh, scored 14 goals and provided eight assists. So when you're looking at that front three for Spurs, you know, with obviously mm. with Dale now, uh, Kane yeah. and Son, where does that rank in the Premier League attacking forces, in your opinion, Al? Oh, boy. Well, we've got the, the golden trio of Liverpool, naturally, with Mane, Salah and Firmino. But you've got to think that Son Bale coming to the Premier Division is just incredible. And then you throw Harry Kane in there, it's got to be... Well, listen, for sports fans, they're hoping that they will be the golden trio. I mean, it's, is it better than Manchester United? Yes. Arsenal, I do like Obama Yang, um, et cetera, et cetera. But as a front three, they're going to be pretty potent, you would think. And they're, they're certainly going to rival the champions front three. There's no question about that. And uh, I'm sure that everybody, but everybody at Spurs can't wait for... The addition of Bale naturally alongside Son and Kane. I think even neutrals are looking forward to seeing that as well. Um, yeah, I think so. I think you're right. I think you're absolutely right because I was going to throw City's front three in as well. But I think in terms of rotation stuff, I think there's more rotation at Manchester United, maybe a bit more at Arsenal as well. Um, and, and you've got to think that if those three are fit, they basically play. And that's kind of like the Liverpool situation. If those guys are fit, normally that's the three that play. So I think in terms of a strong front three, if you're ready to go, then they, they certainly rival any three in the uh, Premiership for sure. They certainly do. And tough question this, Al. But in your opinion, yeah. who's first on the team sheet, Son or Kane? Oh, Emma. <laughs> who, who would you... Who would, oh, I need to go Kane, don't I? He's a captain after all. And he is, you know, he is kind of the golden boy, Harry Kane. I know he struggled a little bit and he got that injury, didn't he, Emma? And he, you know, he's only just coming back, but he's still, he's still a leader for sure. And maybe Son's better than the team because Harry Kane's there. Who would you have, incidentally? Well, I agree, Kane. But do you remember when Kane did have that injury and Spurs fans were worrying about them? But then that mm -hmm. Son seemed to come into his own at that point, didn't he? That's a great point. He came up, stepped up to the plate, carried, they didn't carry the club, but along with Murrah and Celso, et cetera, et cetera, they were, they were, they were pretty good. But I suppose if we're going to go both are fit, I'm still going to go Kane. Okie dokie. Thank you, Al. As always, feel free to have your say in the comments below. Our second one to watch this week is none other than Wilfred Zaha. Uh, 27 years old. He's made it clear he wants to leave Crystal Palace and he's been linked with Arsenal for about 18 months. What are your <laughs> views on him? I was going to say about 18 times there. I thought it was probably <laughs> more, more than that. Well, I, I kind of um, nastily had Palace to go down and at the same time when I was doing it I was like well it's not that I don't like Roy Hodgson because the job he's done at Crystal Palace is just ridiculous it's fantastic but it was kind of on the on the premise that, that Zaha would be leaving it did, I, I, and are you surprised he's still there because I thought he'd be away by now well yeah I think everybody did and, and I want your opinion on that Al can that sort of be a negative in the dressing room you know if the players around him are going we know this guy doesn't want to be here what kind of impact mm. is that going to have on them Brilliant, brilliant question because uh, having been there before and known players that want to go, you kind of disregard them and don't really bother with them. But if you go back to the first day of the season, they win 1 0 and Zaha scores. That's how important he is to the football team and to the football club. But the lads know how important a player he is. <clears throat> but there's, there's, you're right, there is, he has made no bones about the fact he wants to leave. The biggest stumbling block for, for uh, Wolf and Zaha is the asking price that Crystal Palace won. And maybe nobody wants to spend that kind of money on someone when, whether you say money's tight or it's, it's, it's different circumstances or they, they simply don't think he's valued at what Crystal Palace think he's valued at. But as in terms of a football player, he's been very, very good, Wilfred Zaha. And there's a lot of clubs who would like to take him. 
<clears throat> excuse me, but until then, then we'll just have to wait and see if he stays a Crystal Palace player. Do you know, on that, Al, could, could there be a comparison between him and, and <clears throat> Jack Grealish where you look at like quite a significant fee for a player that you're unsure is maybe not quite ready for an elite level yet? Well, the elite level is certainly, there's only a, a group of players that you would actually think they are absolutely top elite level football players and probably do demand huge wages and a price tag of over or, or 100 million pounds, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, Zaha, I mean, he had a crack at the big time, didn't he? And I suppose you could say the big time being Manchester United didn't work out for him for whatever reason. Um, and, I, I, and I know you're probably going to come back and say, well, tell me, wh where can he play in the top six? Yeah. Or the, or the top six, seven, eight teams? Yeah. Where, where, where does he improve? Um, <clears throat> Arsenal. I think, although they've got the boy Gabriel Martinelli, who's a, just a young teenager still, I think he's fantastic on the left-hand side. I think they should give him his, the reins and, and let him go with Obama Yang and the rest of the gang at Arsenal. Would he get in at City? Ooh, maybe not, maybe not. But he'd certainly be a good addition to the squad that I actually thought Riyad Mahrez was when he, when he went to City, and he's done a good job. United, well, like I said, I think that boat has sailed. Um, Liverpool... We it probably wouldn't get in that top three. So it's a difficult situation. I'm going to throw in Spurs, by the way. I mean, Spurs, why can you not go to Spurs? I mean, you're talking about having a squad of players, albeit, have you seen Tottenham? I looked at Tottenham squad the other day. My God, the players they've got. Um, it's, un, it's incredible. But you would like to think that if anything happens to Son, then they're like, well, we've got Louis, we'll get, we'll get Wilfred Zaha. I nearly called Louis there. We'll get Wilfred Zaha. It's a difficult situation for him at the moment. Yes, you're right. He says he wants to leave. And of course, you always say to me, remember, Al, when we're talking about football index, we have to look at the media, media profile of players. Yeah, exposure of that. Uh, yeah, and you always say that. And you're right. He will be still one of the top players, even if he's still at Crystal Palace, because he will be searched and, and wanted by the media. So it's certainly, I think it's a good one for us to put on one to watch. But I think it's certainly a one to watch where he ends up, whether he stays at Crystal Palace or whether somebody forks out. Emma, you any idea how much they want for him, by the way? I have no idea how much they want for him. I'm going to say, am I right in saying that they want about 55, 60? Sounds a bit right, that doesn't is, it? That is quite a lot. Um, but it, do you think, Al, are Crystal Palace maybe preparing for him to leave? You look at some of the people that they've been linked with, some of the players that they've been linked with, like Ben Rama from Brentford, and the, mm. the signings that they've made. Are they kind of looking at their squad and going, do you know what? If Zaha leaves, we need a replacement there. Spot on, Emma. Absolutely spot on. You're right. Although Ben Rama, that Ben Rama, Ben Rama is still at Brentford. They've brought in uh, brought in uh, but I do think they are preparing for life after is it the fifth of October? I think it finishes without Wilfred Zaha. Thank you very much, Al. As always, feel free to have your say in the comments below. Now, our final one to watch today is Thiago Alcantara. We've heard mm. a lot about this guy. 29 years old, joined from Bayern Munich for a potential 25 mil, but an upfront fee of just 5 million, Al. That is an absolute steal, is it not? How can you pay an upfront fee? I know there will be add-ons, naturally, but an upfront fee for a player that wins the Champions League who is the best player in that team in the Champions League final and Liverpool get him for £5 million plus add-ons. The in deal is unbelievable, Emma. Genuinely. It's incredible. <laughs> uh, I mean, he had 75 successful passes in 45 minutes against Chelsea. Yeah. That's more than the whole of the Chelsea team and it's a Premier League record and they've got him for a £5 million up front. <clears throat> in, in your opinion, Al, is he the Premier League signing of the summer so far? I know, obviously... Transfer window's not closed yet. But mm. so far, is he? Well, we've got to say that, that Bale was up there, wasn't it? But he's still a Real Madrid player after all. You know, Liverpool have actually taken Thiago Alcantara away from one of the biggest clubs in Europe. And the other thing is as well, and, and I know how you go and you watch Leeds United, but we, we watch loads of football, you and I, and you think, OK, we've just spoken about uh, Wilfred Zaha. When you bring him in the team, is it an upgrade on what you've already got? Now, Thiago Gantara has come to the champions of England, who won the Champions League a year ago, or, two, or whatever, just the year before Bayern just won it. Does he make them better? Yes, absolutely he does. Absolutely. So in terms of the signing of the season, you've got to think, how, how did Liverpool possibly get Thiago Alcantara away from Bayern Munich? 
Klopp must have been part of it. And he obviously watches a lot of English football and naturally Liverpool carry such a heavy name in the world of football that sometimes players just do really want another challenge. But I think he could be the signing of the season easily, certainly in terms of money spent. And I know he's only 29 years old, but I'm like, only 29? I mean, listen, well, I, I think he's a starter. That's how good I think Thiago Alcantara is when you think of the midfield players that Liverpool have got. So he starts. So who else starts in that central midfield? Because Liverpool have quite a few options now. Yeah, well, I think Jordan Henderson's still a starter. I think if he's fit, he plays. He's a captain. Uh, and there's no, there's, the, the two of them can play together because Jordan will do his thing on the right-hand side and Alcantara will just spray the ball all over the place. And I mean, you talked about his passing uh, stats the other day. I mean, a lot of them are only three and five yard passes, but what happens at football players at that level? He's already thinking, I'm giving it to you, I'll get it to him, I'll get it back, and it's going there. He's not thinking, I'm just going there immediately. It's there, 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 go. That's how he's so good. And that's where he sees the game different from other people. The other person in the middle of the park would probably be Fabinho, because he's the, he would be then the, not the, wrong to say destroyer, because he's a good player, Fabinho, but I think Klopp trusts Fabinho. So I would go Alcantara, Fabinho and Henderson, although they do have obviously the likes of James Milner and Keita and Oxley Chamberlain. And I, I don't know, it's what, what there was talk about Wijnaldum actually leaving Liverpool. So he's, he's certainly making sure that if Wijnaldum does go somewhere else, then he's got, you know, another body in. And not just another body, he's brought one of the best football players in Europe in Thiago Alcantara. He certainly has got some great options there. As always, feel free to have your say and let us know who would be the three starting in midfield for Liverpool and the usual formation. Al, thank you very much for joining us. As Thanks, always. Em. Uh, see you back here next week. And thank you for joining us for Ones to Watch, powered by Football Index, where you bet on the football stock market by buying shares in the world's top players. See you next week, Al. Bye.